but we've got this big modern divider here, haven't we? My cunning plan <laughs> is to put wood paneling at the bottom and above that we'll have a lime plaster of a special kind that you, that's mixed with resin that, that uh, sticks to smooth surfaces. I've got a bad feeling about this one.
With fruits coming ripe here all through the year, whether in the garden or around the forest in the wild, a really good way of preserving them is a wonderful Germanic tradition called the Rumtopf, uh, a rum pot, which is also apparently popular in Denmark and Switzerland and the Tyrolean area of Italy and I would imagine somewhere like Austria, well I'm not sure. Um, we got this rum top, the traditional one, when we were on holiday in Switzerland two or three years ago I think and we've never actually used it so this is my first go at doing a rum top. The idea behind it is that you do layers of fruit and sugar and cover them with rum and you don't have to just do it all in one go and then leave it. Uh, you can keep adding to it throughout the year so that by um, Christmas or apparently the tradition is to do it by the first Sunday in Advent, you have a pot full of stewed um, alcoholic fruits uh, which are a representation of your garden and the forest throughout the year. I'm going to take you through everything I've got on the table ready to do this. I'm outside because frankly it's nicer out here and a bit of a mess in the kitchen but that means I brought out my water bowl to rinse the fruit. I have my sugar to cover the fruit. I have the first crop of the year, which is our cherries, which we actually froze and I've just taken out of the freezer because we didn't have time to do anything with them. I have mirabelles, which we picked yesterday. Uh, my weighing scales and my teapot because I like having a cup of tea whilst I'm doing it. Of course, the most important ingredient here is the rum. And I've been educated in rum since meeting Mark and living in the West Indies. Um, most rum is made as a byproduct of the sugar producing industry. And so it's made from molasses and that can taste quite harsh and almost chemically. But in a lot of the French West Indies, they produce it from pure sugarcane juice, which makes it a much nicer taste. Now you can use different um, strengths of rum for this a lot of people recommend you only use 80 percent alcohol but to be honest that doesn't make it taste terribly good at the end and uh, this is 50 percent and even 40 percent is totally fine for preserving fruits what i would recommend more is making sure you've got a half decent one so it tastes nice at the end of it rather than just buying something that you want to um, use to strip paint with uh, the first thing you want to do is check your fruit over. If there's anything that's mouldy or too damaged, um, discard it. Like that one's been had a go at by birds. But it doesn't matter if they're a bit bruised because it just brings the flavour out more. So something like that is absolutely fine. I'm going to put them in the water. <coughs> the great thing of doing it out here as well, it means that if there's something that's a bit rotten, I just throw it to the birds. And as I said before, the cherries over here, uh, they were picked and frozen in the late spring. Uh, it's a great way to preserve your fruits if you haven't got time to, and vegetables, if you haven't got time to process them. Oh, you want more, do you? As with any sort of preserving, you want to make sure everything is really clean in advance. So um, clean your rum pot out and give it a rinse even with some boiling water just to make sure it's completely clean. Now, one of the common recipes given is that you want to put half as much sugar as in weight as there is in a, a fruit. But that could end up being a little bit too sweet. And for me, I'd rather add less sugar at the beginning and sweeten it when it's served because the sugar in this recipe doesn't actually play any part in the preservation. So my first contribution is the cherries. I haven't de-stoned them. Um, this is partly because I haven't got the time and can't be bothered. Um, but it's also because it'll make them just really mushy, even the non-frozen fruits. And I'd rather they keep their shape in the rum pot. I'm just weighing them. I haven't got enough weights. I can't find them. So this should tell me. That's about a pound. So I'm going to put them in there. And we got this 
rum pot in Switzerland a few years ago and it was in a brocant, uh, the Emmaus brocant, it's a charity, a homeless charity. Um, we've been meaning to use it ever since. I'm going to put all of my cherries in. Uh, I think that should be about another pound. Yeah, it's about one and a half pound. So I've got just over two pounds of cherries there in a nice layer at the bottom. I'm going to go for a quarter of that weight in um, sugar. So that's half a pound, which amazingly is almost exactly what I've got in the pantry. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that's all mixed in. And because I've got two lots of fruit today, I'm just going to carry on with this um, and do the second lot as well. Uh, next are the Mirabelles, which are very close to green gauges and I'm going to see how much there is. I won't have enough sugar for this, um, and we live a long way from the grocery stores, uh, so I just need to make a note of how much I need to get later and add it in. We're talking about about a pound, maybe a pound and a half of these. <laughs> and the last bit of sugar. We've only got quarter of a pound there so I'm going to need to add a bit more later I'm going to go and rinse my hands and this uh, of sugar before I get eaten alive by ants and in the meantime I'm going to put the lid back on my rum top and let it sit for about an hour to macerate the, the fruit in the sugar and then I'll add my rum later. So it's about an hour later, I didn't time it exactly but I'm sure it was about an hour later and my fruit has um, soaked in with the sugar nicely. The sugar can help it release some of its juices, that's why we um, marinate it in that for a little while. And now it's time for me to use my rum agricole, which is the name used for the rum that's made with uh, sugarcane juice, not the molasses. There are all sorts of recipes online for how much you need per fruit and things, but essentially all you need to know is it just needs to cover the fruit, because as long as alcohol is covering the fruit, it won't go bad and it'll help keep preserving it. I suspect we're going to need more than one bottle for this eventually. There we go. It's all covered now. In fact, I've been quite generous with the rum there, but it's, you're always going to be adding more fruit, so don't feel like it's going to go to waste. So there we go. I've used about just over half, nearly two thirds of a bottle of rum for about three pounds of fruit. Um, and I'd say about a pound of sugar so far, although I'll probably add some more with other layers. 
Now all I have to do is put some cling film on there just as an extra layer to stop the uh, alcohol from evaporating. Put the lid on and find somewhere nice and cool for it to marinade until we have our next layer of fruit. Right, I'm on my way to see what Mark has been up to. And I have a panting dog behind me, it's not me, in case you wondered. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, lasers and everything. Wow, that looks so good. Naked. Yeah. So where I spent uh, the most time was actually uh, drilling the holes for the the sockets at the right places. Yeah. And I was doing this one, and then I remembered we said we would take uh, this switch off. Yeah, because um, we discovered yeah. that there was a oh we, there was a weird switch we didn't know what it was, and we um, looked on the architect's plans for the place and eventually worked out it was supposed to be to turn off the main lights from when you're in bed, but it looks a bit odd on its own, so we thought yeah, we'd cover it up. because it's in the middle of the... Exactly. The so I had done it, but uh, I, then uh, after I you did remembered. it, I remembered we said we'd, uh, we'd suppress it. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to rewire it so to turn the two-way switch into a one-way switch. Ah, oh, um, so that the main... Yeah, so one. that it's all uh, from here. Yeah. And this one will be behind the wood panel, so if we ever want to put it back, uh, we, we know where it is. Brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. So, yeah. so yes, um, shall I take it up then? Yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's like the big mm. run all over again. Okay, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link up here for if anyone wants to see Mark actually being electrocuted. <laughs> you enjoyed that, don't you? <laughs> there we go. And what the... are you doing exactly? Uh, red is the face, phase, and uh, the two purple ones are the, the two-way switch. So I'm uh, just uh, removing one of the two and connecting the other one with the phase. And so it turns the switch over there the two, into a one-way switch. Ah. Is that okay? That's very clever. How do you know how to do that sort of thing? Uh, well, be, because uh, you try and if it doesn't work, uh, it sets fire. And, and you know it was <laughs> the, wrong, uh, the wrong way. This should be okay. Then I put it back in place. Here it is. Hey! As if it had never been here. <laughs> and so I can put the plug back. So that's quite easy. We put the blue one on the blue one. <laughs> So that's that shouldn't be behind the wood. And here we go. Again. That looks cracking. Well done. So it's not uh, it's not finished because there will be another uh, plank well, in yeah. the back to to make it flush against the wall. And we and we'll and uh, we need to design uh, some kind of molding to probably to look nice. 
and we then are going to work on what we do at the edges as well to mold them into the doors and st doorways and stuff aren't we how we edge it yeah but it gives an amazing feeling of what it's going to look like let me stand right back and zoom us out i like it and so is it now the onus on me to get on with the plastering mm, yeah, that would be good. and we're still yeah. thinking of going for that color over there now well actually <gasps> actually i thought we could have it blue <laughs> you're winding me up aren't you oh. Um, and we're going to paint these eventually as well, aren't we? These um, panels. Yeah, purple. <laughs> what did you have in your lunch? <laughs> I want to show them what a beautiful job you did of the bottom. It's not uh, flush yet because I had to let it loose a bit. Uh, yeah, but still. To assemble the rest, but it will be. Uh... So you routed the the top of the the, um, the skirting board, the skirting board the other and you planed it and made it look all lovely. And that's one of our trees. And then you put the shop bought ones over the top, didn't you? Yep. And a few people, like Mike from the channel Meanwhile in Indiana, if you have a look at that, he um, he suggested that we stained this woodwork um rather than painting it and what's your response to that i think it's not uh, the wood's not quite nice enough to be stained i it was quite fashionable to stain it in, i i well i just fear it might look a bit too 70s if we stained it um, it's partly because it's very, very uniform, isn't it? So it's yeah, it's uh, it's clearly industrially made. Yeah, and uh, and also I think it's not uh, the in traditionally they would uh, they would stain more noble woods, mm. but uh, pine would just be painted and uh, yeah and covered. Well, what we can do anyway is, as we plan to do the um, plastering, and then we can sort of see what it looks like. And your suggestion previously also had been to plaster before we put the top line on so that we can get a nice, neat join. Yeah, yeah. Probably. So if the children are in agreement, maybe next week I can have a go at the plastering. Yeah. But in the French West Indies, there's a wonderful tra There's a wonderful tradition of making it directly. Pepper! What do I look like when I'm talking? What should I do when I'm talking? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle, here's my spout. When you hear a whistle, give a little shout. Tip me up and pour me out. Do you not know that? Right.